Hi guys, it is another red flag wildfire warning hot summer day in early April here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the great state of Texas. It is now Tuesday, April 12th, 2022, somewhere around there. So as some of you probably already know, uh, I'm 90% sure I do have corona panic. I am having a bad hair day. And uh, so I have been spending pretty much the bulk of my afternoon uh, trying to get my hands on one of these bullshit at home uh, corona panic test kits. And I managed to, to spill all of the test fluid after spending uh, half my half my afternoon and eleven dollars, I managed to spill the uh, test fluid out of the test tube. Uh, so I guess it will just be a great mystery whether or not I do have Corona panic. So while I am still alive. We're just going, there is so much doom and gloom here. Uh, we're just going to have kind of a straightforward, uh, straightforward little education on thawing permafrost. Uh, just a straight ahead conversation from this group. The conversation, I think I've mentioned this fellow and other permafrost rants. This fellow name is Mark J. Lara, L-A-R-A, -A, and he is a professor of plant biology and geography at the University of Illinois, and he is going to give us kind of a thawing permafrost 101 lesson. And uh, so I'm going to put the link on here and you can read this yourself. Otherwise, uh, while I am still alive and have not died of Corona panic, for my last rant ever, before uh, I die in my sleep tonight, take it away, Professor Lara, and explain to us about falling permafrost is roiling. I love that word, R-O-I-L-I-N-G, roiling the Arctic landscape driven by a hidden world of changes beneath the surface as the climate warms. And he's got a lot of really good photographs uh, to, you, you know, uh, where a picture says a thousand words. And I notice an associated article uh, titled, Why No One Talks About This Alaska Time Bomb. That we're going to talk about this Alaska time bomb right here. <coughs> Take it away, Professor Lara. <clears throat> Across the Arctic, strange things are happening to the landscape. Massive lakes Several square miles in size have disappeared in the span of a few days. Hillsides slump, ice-rich ground collapses, leaving the landscape wavy where it was once flat, and in some locations creating vast fields of large sunken polygons. You'll have to look up polygon if you don't know what that means. <clears throat> this is evidence that permafrost, well, what I call temperfrost, the long frozen soil below the surface is thawing, and that is bad news for the communities built above it and for the global climate. As an ecologist, I study these dynamic landscape interactions and have been documenting the various ways permafrost-driven landscape change has accelerated over time. The hidden changes underway there hold a warning for the future. 
So, what is permafrost? <coughs> or what is temperfrost, or what was permafrost. <coughs> permafrost is, I guess, supposed to be perennially frozen soil that covers about one quarter of the land in the Northern Hemisphere, particularly in Canada, Russia, and Alaska. Much of it is rich with the organic matter of long-dead plants and animals frozen in time. These supposedly frozen soils maintain the structural integrity of many northern landscapes, providing stability to vegetated and unvegetated surfaces similar to the load-bearing support beams and buildings. As you know, there's a but coming in here somewhere, but as temperatures rise and patterns of precipitation change, permafrost and other forms of ground ice become vulnerable to fall and collapse. As these frozen soils warm, the ground destabilizes, unraveling the interwoven fabric that has delicately shaped these dynamic ecosystems for millennia. Wildfires, which have been increasing across the Arctic, have also been increasing the risk. I bet it has. Under the surface, something else is active, and it is amplifying global warming. When the ground thaws, microbes began, feast, began feasting on organic matter and soils that have been frozen for thousands of years. These microbes release carbon dioxide and methane, both potent greenhouse gases. As those gases escape into the atmosphere, they further warm the climate, creating a feedback loop. Warmer temperatures thaw more, you know, frozen soil, releasing more organic material for microbes to feast on and produce more greenhouse gases. So when you're, we're now going to look at the evidence for people who claim the, the uh, permafrost frost methane bomb is a joke. What is the evidence? We're going to start with disappearing lakes. Evidence of human-caused climate change is mounting across the permafrost extent. The disappearance of large lakes, multiple square miles in size, is one of the most striking examples of recent patterns of northern landscape transitions. The lakes are draining later laterally as wider and deeper drainage channels develop or vertically through what he calls Talics, T A L I K, where unfrozen soil under the lake gradually deepens until the permafrost is penetrated and the water drains away. There is now overwhelming evidence indicating that surface water across permafrost regions is declining. Satellite observations and analysis indicate lake drainage may be linked with permafrost degradation. Colleagues and I have found it increases with warmer and longer summer seasons. This insight came after some of the highest rates of catastrophic lake drainage. Drainage that occurs over a few days due to permafrost degradation on record 
were observed over the past five years in northwestern Alaska, the disappearance of lakes across the permafrost extent is likely to affect the livelihoods of indigenous communities as water quality and water availability, also important for waterfowl, fish, and other wildlife shift. By shifting, he means disappearing into the ground as there is no longer a, an ice barrier to prevent them from draining. Okay, let's look at slumping hills and polygon fields. Slumping hills and polygon fields forever. Sounds like a song. The thaw and collapse of buried glacial ice is also causing hillsides to slump at increasing rates across the North American and Russian Arctic, sending soil, plants, and debris, you know, things like oil pipelines, that kind of de debris, sliding down slope. One new study in Siberia found that the disturbed land surfaces increased over 300% over the past two decades. Similar studies in northern Canada found slumping there also accelerated with warmer and wetter summers. He's got some beautiful photos of what that looks like. So what happens in flat terrain? In flat terrain, ice wedges are able to develop creating unusual geometric patterns and changes across the land over decades to centuries. This is what uh, Book Hermit, the only, the only uh, word Book Hermit has heard so far is centuries. Over decades to centuries, melting snow seeps into cracks in the soil, building up wedges of ice. These wedges cause troughs in the ground, creating the edges of polygons. Uh, as ice wedges melt, the ground above them collapses. Even in extremely cold, high Arctic environments, the impacts of only a few Uncommonly warm summers can dramatically change the surface of the landscape, transitioning previously flat terrain into undulating as the surface begins to sink into depressions with the melting of ice in the soil below. Overall rates of ice wedge thawing have increased in response to the climate Warming. Across many Arctic regions, this thawing has also been hastened by wildfires. In a recent study, colleagues and I found that wildfires in Arctic permafrost regions increased the rate of thaw and vertical collapse of the frozen terrain for up to eight decades after a fire because both climate warming and now wildfire disturbance are projected to increase in the future, they may, they may increase the rate of change in northern landscapes. The impact of recent climate and environmental change have also been felt at lower latitudes in the lowland boreal forest their ice-rich permafrost plateaus, defined as elevated permafrost islands heaved above adjacent wetlands, have rapidly degraded across Alaska, Canada, and Scandinavia. They can look like cargo ships filled with sedges, shrubs, and trees sinking into wetlands. 
And so now we're going to try to answer Book Hermit's question, why does this matter? Why does it matter? Who gives a damn? Frigid temperatures and short growing seasons have long limited the decomposition of dead plants and organic matter in northern ecosystems. Because of this, nearly 50% of global soil organic carbon is now stored in these frozen soils. One half of the carbon, according to uh, this ecologist, uh, about one half of this planet's uh, global soil organic carbon is stored in permafrost. The abrupt transitions we are seeing today, lakes becoming drained bases, shrub tundra turning into ponds, lowland boreal forests becoming wetlands, will not only hasten the decomposition of buried permafrost carbon, but also the decomposition of above ground vegetation as it also collapses into water saturated environments. Climate models suggest the impacts of such transitions could be dire. You gotta love that word dire. For example, one recent modeling study published in Nature Communication suggested permafrost degradation and associated landscape collapse could result in a 12-fold increase in carbon losses in a scenario of strong warming by the end of the century. This is particularly important because permafrost is estimated to hold twice as much carbon as the atmosphere holds today. Permafrost depths vary widely, vary widely exceeding 3,000 feet deep in parts of Siberia and 2,000 feet in northern Alaska and rapidly decrease moving south. Fairbanks, Alaska averages around 300 feet. Studies have suggested that much of the shallow permafrost, 10 feet deep or less, would likely thaw if the world remains on its current warming trajectory. To add insult to injury in waterlogged environments lacking oxygen, microbes produce Methane, a potent greenhouse gas, 30 times more effective in warming the planet than carbon dioxide, though it does not stay in the atmosphere as long. So, how big of a problem thawing permafrost is likely to become for the climate is, well, at right now, an open question we know it is releasing greenhouse gases now, but the causes and consequences of permafrost thaw and associated landscape transitions are active research frontiers. One thing is certain. One thing is certain. The thawing of previously frozen landscapes will continue to change the face of high latitude ecosystems for years to come. For people living in these areas, slumping land and destabilizing soil will mean living with the risks and costs, including buckling roads and sinking buildings. Uh, and don't forget the uh, buckling oil and gas pipelines. Uh, like the, uh, what's it called? The Trans-Alaska Pipeline, for instance. Don't forget the buckling 
of oil pipelines out in those uh, pristine Arctic wilderness areas. Anyway, guys, uh, so I love it when we officially officially have uh, the word collapse in a chronicle of the collapse and uh, so that was our little science lesson of the day so with that uh, I'm gonna go uh, stick my fevered head in an ice bath before uh, the ice all melts on this hot summer day and the approaching wildfires Burn the whole shit show down. Bye, guys.